Aloha and hello. Welcome to Holy Matrimony. I'm James Fenimore. That's at James Fenimore underscore. And I'm Trisha Fenimore. That's at Trisha Fenimore. You can also find the show at Holy Matrimony underscore underscore. You can reach us via email at Holy Matrimony Pod at gmail.com. Send us your questions. Send us your stories. Uh, yeah. You can also get us Rumble, uh, The Fenimores, YouTube, The Fenimores. You get us all places like that. But today, we're brought to you by Sex Ed Reclaimed. Have you ever wondered how to talk to your kids about sex but don't quite have the words? Sex Ed Reclaimed has you covered with age-appropriate content made just for your family. Get curriculum that covers all the hard topics from a faith-based worldview. Krista Miele has educated tens of thousands of students in multiple countries to encourage organic conversations within families about a gift God created. This education was made for such a time as this, so find your curriculum today at sexedreclaimed.com. All right, we've got a good one today. We do. We're going to be talking about prioritizing the relationship. Very important. Very important because it's so easy to get lost in the minutia of just everyday life. I think everyone is vying for our attention these days. Like starting with the phone, but then there's like soccer, you know, practices, there's doctor's appointments, there's work obligations, there's other family members' obligations. Everyone wants our attention. But we got to give each other attention, right? I'm, 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 I, you have my attention. I'm here. I'm present. I'm with you. You active listening. I'm active listening. <laughs> Very important. Very important. Um, but, I mean, look, just think about how work has changed in, like, the last 20 years, right? With email and taking yes. your phone home with you. And, you know, it used to be mm. you left the office, you left the office. But now, not the case. Right. So You bring the office home with you. So with people being able to contact you from even, like, the work life, it's really a struggle to let go of that so getting distracted in your professional life taking that home with you you know back in the day you'd come home that was all left be, you know back at the office like right. maybe you'd have a bowling league you'd go to and that right. was about it <laughs> right so prioritizing each other is super important yeah i mean you uh, you brought up a good point where like even your friendships were different back before technology really evolved because it was like you'd see them when you would physically see them. Now it's like people can text you all the time. We can send memes to each other. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But everyone wants our attention, including all these strangers on the internet, you know? <laughs> so how do we prioritize the relationship and give each other that attention when it's the, the commodity that everyone is looking to get, basically? A absolutely. I mean, you know, it's, <clears throat> so, it's so easy to just get distracted. I think that's the point we're basically making. And, yeah. and, and in, for some reason, it's, it's good distractions, right? You have kids. Right. You have soccer practice and baseball practice and music practice and dance practice. You know, So your kids, which are a wonderful gift, they could be a distraction from prioritizing this. And, and I think it's important to delineate that you know, just because you're going out as a family isn't necessarily prioritizing your relationship. You taught me that, actually, where like when we got married, he insisted that we go on date nights. And that wasn't something that I saw growing up, you know, like it, it just wasn't. And so the idea of a weekly date night, and it doesn't need to be something fancy, you know, like we've gone, we've gone bike riding, we've gone, we've gone to Costco, although I would caution that that's a very expensive date. Um, and, you know, like it doesn't need to be anything fancy. It's just time with the two of us without anyone else. Yeah. You know, um, and and I think that that's important no matter when that occurs. I mean, we recently started a thing each evening where we both put our phones down and we set them down and keep them down for an hour where it's just the two of us. Um, and I think that that's been really wonderful. You know, there's a lot of ways that we can kind of work in prioritizing the relationship where it doesn't need to wait until Friday night for our weekly date night. And then it's like you're playing catch up on the week. You could start with 20 minutes without a phone or like a five minute check in or something, um, you know, like and and. And just keep the romance alive that way. And the phone thing, by the way, doesn't just have mm -hmm. to be like put the phone down and sit in silence. Like that could even include watching something on TV. Because how many people complain about, oh, I watch something with my husband or my wife and they're on their phone and then I have to rewind it and explain to them because they miss something. That's you. You're complaining because that's our scenario. <laughs> 
No. <laughs> That's our scenario. <laughs> Sweetheart, you are very special. You're very unique, but we are not special in this situation. <laughs> this is people across the globe. <laughs> I don't even think this is unique to America. I'm like, wait, why is she talking with him now? What just happened? And he's like, you gotta, you gotta I'm like, focus you on. Gotta pay attention. Like, I'm not doing this again. No, but in all seriousness, like it's it's. But even so, when you're both entrenched in a show together, yeah, it's even that is a bonding moment because, like, if it's a suspenseful thing or right. a comedy, and you're laughing together, yes, and you're that's enjoying a it, thing. you know, it's it feels kind of lonely if you're both watching something intense or really funny, and like one of you starts laughing and the other one's just sitting there on your phone. It's like, well, yeah. you know, like I'm I'm here by myself. That's and, true. You know, so. The, the, putting the or phone when on. both of you are on, because you know sometimes we're in that position too, <laughs> where it's like we're both be on our phone, and like there is a time and a place for that, where sometimes you just need to kind of shut down the engines and just kind of do that. But it's like you know if we're if we're looking for ways to prioritize the relationship, us putting down our phone for each other for an hour doesn't mean that we're staring into each other's eyes and like yes. tell me about all the things deep uh, within you. <laughs> yeah that was 20 seconds it's getting creepy. it wasn't so, even 20 seconds <laughs> and so it's like you know we can we can get creative with it yeah so it's a, we're not we're not basically <clears throat> recommending like you know some super like exercise it's just basically put the phone down and enjoy being present with your with your husband or your wife. I would also say like doing little sweet things. Maybe like we all have those things that we used to do when we were dating. Like I recently did this and I'll confess I hadn't done this for a while where it was like when we were dating I would give him I would get like little funny greeting cards and like leave little notes all the time like all the time um and as the years went on and as more more people populated our home and more people needed you know me as a mom and stuff like that it's like that kind of took a back seat and that's okay that wasn't you know where our relationship was at at that point um but recently like you know i'll go through the card aisle and i'll pick one up and the other day i left one on you know by by your office and and stuff like that and it's like you know he does a great job at this too where it's like occasionally he'll surprise me with flowers or like a little special treat that he knows i would like or something and it's like to do those little things it's really incredible what something so small can do for somebody's day and for the partnership as a whole. Yeah, it's it just lets the, you know like you're thinking about them, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I'm not just in, even in, in that minutiae that we talked about in the beginning of the everyday at my job or just running errands or just doing what you normally do, seeing a little candy that I know you like or, or seeing something, a flower that I know you love. And, you know, because it's not, a lot of times I get you flowers. It's not just like, oh, I have to go get you flowers. First of all, reframe that right off the bat you know that's an old coach trick like i don't have to get you flowers i get to get you flowers you do get to get me flowers yeah that's what right a what a privilege it is that. you are welcome thank you thank <laughs> you, you are welcome i am so blessed so blessed and i am reminded of it regularly oh uh, no i am kidding i am very blessed but no it is true i get to get you flowers and it is fun it is a privilege but in this instance it's not only that i know the flowers you like or i see a flower that i think you'll like and i'll walk yeah. by i'll be like you know what? She would really like that. I'm gonna yeah. get, I'm gonna grab her those flowers, not just oh, let me just grab her flowers. It's been a while. It's more like you know what? I think those will brighten her day, like those yeah. specific flowers, and that's fun for me. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna say, I think it's also so important to model this to kids. Yeah. You know, because like what I said in the beginning, where it's like, all right, I didn't see a weekly date night growing up, so when you came at me with the idea, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like what? Um, and so now our kids will be raised seeing a weekly date night. You know, they'll be raised seeing a mom and dad who kiss in the kitchen sometime. Nothing crazy, but you know, like... And, Not and, anymore. <laughs> maybe when the kids are away. All right, all uh, right. Take it easy. This is, this is monetized, hopefully. <laughs> um, and so anyway, um, I think it's important to model that for kids is to show them what prioritizing the relationship looks like on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, on a tiny little, like, out of the blue, little back rub when I'm emptying the dishwasher or you or emptying the dishwasher, you know, I'm, you know, just helping each other out and being there. 
And to your original point, it doesn't need to be a big thing. Like, right. I, you know, if you're on a budget, or even if you're not on a budget, like, we don't need to be breaking the bank every every no. Friday or Saturday night. I used night. to write you notes on Post-it notes, but you know? But I'm talking like, about the date night aspect oh, yeah. of things. So, like, I know a few weeks ago... Don't go ago, to Costco. Oh, yeah, that dude, is going to break avoid, the bank. Avoid, don't do Costco. Avoid that. At, like, the <laughs> and by the way... <laughs> go I, to, like, a five-star no. restaurant. It'll be less expensive than a date night to Costco. That's what I learned. <laughs> I, the same token, don't go to a movie theater either, by the way. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you've how been there expensive are those now? You know, now, yes. I know, now I know why street streaming is killing movies but um a few weeks ago you know we were fortunate enough to live close to a beach we we just grabbed a few sandwiches grabbed some chairs and just sat on the beach and had sandwiches right. and just had like a lovely evening on the beach and right. it was awesome and right. it was like because again as parents with young kids when right. was the last time we sat on the beach and relaxed yeah i could tell you it's been a while yeah, and that sure. alone was like a novelty, right? Well, and it's like even if you don't live near the beach, because that's like a built-in date, you know, like that's ready-made. But a lot of people don't, and so it's like, all right, is there a lake? Is there like a state park hiking trail that you could go for a walk yeah. on? You know, like there's all these simple ways um, that we can do things. I mean, I remember like track meteor showers. I took astronomy classes in New York and was like kind of a nerd there for a while about it, but it's like, there's so for, much for a while. <laughs> we're, we're not still. <laughs> well, a little bit, a little bit. um, and so, you know, like there's so many amazing things we can do that doesn't cost a dime. That's really just appreciating the beauty and wonder around us. Um, Yes. Yeah. yeah, getting a little off topic there. But. No, no, it's it's re it's really not though because it, that, that the important thing is spending the time together. Yeah. And doing things together. So if the, you know, we we want to make so many excuses and and like sabotage being able to do these things together, but there really is no excuse. I yeah, mean, you're look, right. I understand if if you have children and childcare is an issue because it's expensive or mm -hmm. you don't have family that can help. That could be an issue, no doubt about it. So then you have to maybe invent the wheel a little differently. I was going to say, maybe once the kids go to sleep, exactly, you do like one night a week as like a date night at home. You get some popcorn from the grocery store. It's going to be w way cheaper, way cheaper than the, gro than the movie theater. Just yeah. add extra salt and butter. You'll get the same effect. You know, stream something and do your own movie night. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be something fancy or to be Or sit special. outside, you know, and just enjoy, just do something different. But That's I also think that you brought up a good point when it comes to having kids and like, you know, when we first moved across the country, we didn't have childcare. So we were kind of in that position as well. Um, and it's like, how do you, how do you prioritize the relationship in all these different phases of the relationship, mm. you know, and can we be conscious of the different phases and the different seasons that we're in and grow together within each season? Yeah. It's and, and growing together is, I think, one of the most important things in a relationship yeah. because otherwise you, you start to leave somebody behind. Mm -hmm. And if you leave them behind, then mm -hmm. hopefully they catch up. <laughs> yeah. But there's a lot that could be a real struggle down the road. And, that, and that's what you don't want to get into. So, yeah, sorry. Go no, ahead. No, I was actually just going to offer some hope that like if somebody's listening and they already feel like they've grown apart from their spouse you know like if you're growing apart it's never too late to start going back together and to start reprioritizing the relationship and better you do it now than when you guys are out here you know like it could always be worse and so better to it's it's better to start making it better now than you know just waiting and saying oh it's too far gone Nothing's too far gone. And to that point, what I would say is do not put too much pressure on it. Mm -hmm. If this is something you want to implement and it's new, don't put too much. Don't every Friday we have to do this. Try to do it once a month. Then try to do it once every few weeks. Yeah. Then try to, you know, don't try to put too much because you're going to eventually maybe feel like you're failing and you're not. You know, you're trying something new. Anytime you try something new, it's difficult. So, Small wins, little wins. Try to do it once in a while. Mark it on a calendar. Make it a special occasion so you're looking forward to it. And then you'll build it into a routine. And once it's a routine, then you'll miss it when it doesn't happen. But mm. you won't feel like you failed. Mm -hmm. You'll just be like, oh, you know, it just got caught up. Let's make sure we prioritize it next Friday. I feel like I went through a phase of that where I put so much, ex like so many expectations and so much pressure on it. And I was, I wanted to like take the reins and, you know, orchestrate some of the dates and then it was like 
a room in our house flooded. There was like, you know, a sick kid one week. And then it was like every time. And then I felt like all this pressure that like, ah, oh, it's not working out. But I agree. I think uh, that feeling, it's not helpful. Just like exhale and say, look, if it didn't work this time, it will. It will next time. We're not going anywhere. No, it's the, it's the, and, not, and it's causing the opposite of what you're trying to do. And what you're trying to do is enjoy each other. Exactly. And you don't want to put that pressure on. Now, if you have a partner that's just totally against this, different story. You might want to shoot us a message and yeah. maybe we could, you know, make it one of our questions of the day. And, yeah. you know, we could talk to you about it. We'll probably DM you back on that one. Yeah. But uh, happy to help. Yeah. Um, Speaking of but, questions of the day. Yeah, I think that kind of puts a bow on this. <laughs> I think so. Um, but most importantly, prioritize your, your relationship. Prioritize your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, whatever it might be. It, it is going to bear so much fruit. I cannot stress that enough. Absolutely. And set a great, it sets a great example, you know, as to what a healthy, loving relationship looks like. Yeah. So get out there. Give it a shot. Any questions? Start making out in the kitchen, guys. <laughs> you have our permission. You have her permission. I just winked and did finger guns. Yeah. I think is, it's time we move on. This is getting out of control. <laughs> This is going to turn into a solo show real fast. <laughs> With just you. Real fast. <laughs> All right. Let's get into our answer the internet. My let's favorite part of the show. All right. Hi, James and Trisha. I love the podcast so far. My question is, what is love? Is it a feeling or a choice? Where do I look? Thanks so much. <clears throat> All right. So this is a pretty pretty profound and deep kind of a question like is it a feeling or a choice i should have finished my coffee this morning to to handle this one <laughs> uh based on your performance so far you should not have <laughs> um there I, are you know what i'm there, gonna do more coffee there have been recording. i'm gonna do double the coffee yeah, then i'm gonna be, turn this into a three ring circuit the last thing we need is double finger guns <laughs> and extra winks Believe me. I can only wink on one side. It is a yeah. it is a small tragedy. Then we'll be then you'll be twitching. Um, <laughs> All right. So, so what is love? Let's let's go with your definition. Well, what is no, love? We're not going to define love here. I think we should dive into the is it a feeling or a choice portion of it because I think that's where this is going. Right? Okay. Is it a feeling or a choice? So, what um, say you? I don't think it's a choice. I think it's I think it's a I think it's something that you really kind of can't control. Right. Um. And I think in that context of this, that's important to understand because if you're, if somebody is interested in you and you think they're all the right things on paper, that might not be. Yes. However, didn't the other day you just described like a situation where loving somebody, the, the expression of loving the person can sometimes be a choice where like you choose, like we were talking, so we were talking about a question that came into us about like somebody who had felt attraction toward like a neighbor. And we were kind of chatting about this question that we received. And you said like, they have to love their spouse enough to choose to avoid that person and avoid the circumstances where they'd be near that person. So I think that the expression of love is sometimes a choice yeah, where you choose to prioritize not, the relationship. But that's not love. <clears throat> that's lust. No, what they felt for the neighbor might yeah, have been. Yeah, but yeah. I'm saying choosing to avoid the neighbor who they felt physically attracted to, that's an act of love that is a choice. You know, I think this person's asking what is love. But like, I'm saying the expression of love can sometimes be a choice. Yeah, no, I, I don't think that's what this person's asking, though. I think they're asking, what is love? I think they want to know, oh, can like... I choose to love someone? Like, like here's a great example. We've both dated people in the past. Yes. Okay? I have been with mm -mm. people that I dated, and they were right on paper for me. Mm. And people were like, wow, that's, that person seems it's great. great. Yeah. And, you know, and they, they get along been, yeah. with people. And, you know, I hope they were because I was dating them. Like, I mean, I had to be a real psycho if I was dating Well, a, like attracts like. Psycho. So I think that they were pretty great. You know? They had to be. But at the end of the day, if they're not right for me, mm. if I don't, you know, if, the, if it's not like a, a long-term feeling or a long-term mm. love, you know, it's just, it's just not, if it's not there, it's not there. So I would say in, in my dating experience, 
Don't know if you guys know this about me. I'm a pretty high strung person. <laughs> I get a little a little neurotic and a little angry. I wish we had like a news flash <laughs> Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> Trisha, not a calm person. Um, sometimes I'm laid back. That's the closest I can get. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. What I'm trying to say is dating was often an unenjoyable experience for me because I would overthink so much. And finally, actually, incidentally, a few weeks before I met uh, my husband here, uh, I said a prayer and I said, you know what, God, like, I'm just going to follow the chemistry. I'm going to follow, like, and it's not, it wasn't like, well, it wasn't like to follow lust, although, like, the, the physical attraction should play a role, um, but it's like, there was something else and when we matched on the dating app that we met on and we started kind of like having this banter that you see here it was chemistry like i could just tell like the way there was just an ease to it right and there i was able to feel like i could be myself without even trying you know like whereas before it kind of felt like sometimes i would like okay i want to order the right thing i want to say the right thing and with you, there was just like an ease where without any sort of precursor, I just could be myself and and be a little more relaxed. I, I, I That's great. I don't want to deter people if they're nervous on a date. So it just no. I was definitely nervous. Yeah. I was a head case. Don't don't get that wrong. I was. Th this was nervous, but like in here, there was a calm. I I and I think it. I think it differs for every person. Maybe that's it. I think yeah. this this will this feeling will manifest differently mm -hmm. for each person. I think I think there needs to be some intellectual honesty amongst you, knowing you'll know when you love someone. And you'll know, like, I need to be with this part. I think for me, my big thing was, like, there were things I wasn't willing to, like, change. And I don't mean change about myself, like, my personality or whatever. Like, just, like, sacrifices I was willing to make or things I was, like, firm on in the past. Whether it was, you know, some, some of it was stupid. Like, um, I don't want to, you know, go here for dinner or try this or <clears> go <throat> but like when i met you it was like i didn't even think about that like mm -hmm. th these are things that are no longer are even a thought it's like okay let's go okay let's do it you know it's like all of a sudden these things that i like would like stand on ceremony because like this mm. is who i am as a person this is who i am as a man whatever all of a sudden go out the window it's just like okay let's go let's do it there's um, a willingness to be flexible maybe though not in an attempt to like please them and make them like you but because you're genuinely inspired to right come yeah. up higher and try something new 100%. or break out of your comfort level 100 <clears throat> percent. and there was a there was a delay in in moving things forward to mm. a degree with other people i had dated like there was a there was an, an inherent delay in taking the next step or thinking about As a things man, that's interesting with commitment 100%. And we can talk about and that. And we will talk. Yeah, we were yeah, going yeah. to talk about that. Um, I was going to say, I really sympathize with the person asking this question because I, I'm a long-term relationship kind of gal before I met Jimmy here. Uh, and I had long-term relationships and I thought that they were love. Um, but now looking back after our relationship, my understanding of love has changed in such a way where I now see that I just thought that that was love. Um, I didn't see it at the time, though I did know that, like, what I was feeling, this couldn't quite be it because it wasn't as fulfilling and, like, full as what it could be you know, or that I thought maybe it could have been. It wasn't until our relationship where I experienced it instead of thinking I was experiencing it. Yeah. Um, and so I would say if you're not sure if you felt like you were in love before, you probably really haven't been. You just kind of were doing what I was doing, which was like learning along the way, but like not really experiencing it. But the good news is, is that then when you do experience it one day, it becomes pretty clear when you experience it because it's such a different experience. Yeah. And we've had, and we <clears> had <throat> different experiences. Like you, you, um, well, we grew up differently too. You grew up in like rural Ohio. I grew yeah. up in New York where, <clears throat> you know. This... You were going to New York City clubs at like what age? Young. Like yeah, people people should have been arrested for letting you in clubs. Yeah, like I was. I, was, I mean, yeah, yeah, I was doing. I was, he tells me these stories. 
let's should we share the story of the movie that's like that really encapsulates the difference of growing up where we were watching one of those movies like, like i don't know road trip like or american team, pop like yeah like one of those old nostalgia where there was like a house party and there, was, there like, was like a dj there was a hundreds of people around like hundred like, like 16 year old pool. kids music pumping and like the house was packed and there were kids everywhere being rambunctious and i looked at i looked at the tv and i go I mean, weren't we just lied to that these parties existed? I mean, nobody has parties like that. And he looks at me and he's like, what What are you talking about? And I was like, well, no high school kid attends a party like that. And he was like, I, I threw parties like that. <laughs> I, I threw those parties. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? So, yeah, you so. know, cultural differences is going to be a, a topic for an upcoming show. Anyways. Of which we have many. <laughs> so so we, we had different stuff. D- different dating experiences yes. where like in your hometown like pe- you know people dated because they, they were dating to get married well, i thought i was going to get married to my junior yeah. high boyfriend oh. technically elementary school boyfriend it was very common where that I... one was unrealistic junior high is when it you know it was very common where i grew up that people didn't get married till their 30s so like there were people that were when they were in their early 20s they were dating and they knew they were not getting married you for know? me it was like growing up if somebody goes past 25 and they're single conversations were had around town so of like ooh. so so that being said there were people that and like, i got married at what 30 31 just yeah, to- <laughs> yeah just for reference um so so anyway for for me like i took i took when i dated like i really explored this love <clears throat> question like you know so once i knew it wasn't the right person i was out yeah. because i was like i'm not wasting my time here i don't want to yeah. waste their time so the, the long and short of it is it, I think, yes, it is a feeling. It is not a choice. Yeah, I think when we talk about choice, we are talking about the checklist thing that yeah. you talked about, where you feel like this is the right person because yes. you're checking off boxes. Yeah. That's not it. You will know it. You will know it when it happens. You will know it because changes are happening in, in your priorities without you changing those priorities on purpose. Mm. I, I think that's that's a good one. That's that's what I felt. I, I all of a sudden I would like look back like weeks and, and months and be like, man, I did a lot of things that I never mm. would have done and I didn't even know I was doing it. You know, like yeah. I would have like done I'm not doing it. I'm a guy's guy or whatever. Like I'm not, you know, whatever whatever Took him it was. to an art museum real early on. <laughs> you know, like whatever, whatever it was. But Things like that. Like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not interested. I'm good. Thanks. You know? I would also say the last question of where do I look is an interesting one because I think when we talk about love, for me, how you've loved me over the years has been so close to what I experienced, like reading about love and experiencing through God and the Bible is like, it's respectful, it's patient, it's kind, it's nurturing, you know, it protects You know, it's honest. You know, all of these, all of these litmus tests that are lined out in the Bible of like, what is love? What, you know, what does it actually look like? Are we receiving that from the partner? You know, because that's important too. It's not just how we feel, but like, are we being treated with respect? You know, are we being loved in return? Um, And then, you know. That's probably a much bigger, broader topic that we're probably going to have to cover at some point. because. We've all been there, right? Where we felt like we've loved someone and maybe weren't getting that yeah. in return. You know, I think when we talk about love, God is love. We should let him define it, right? Amen. He can do it better than us. <laughs> Though we'll try. <laughs> I think that's true. So you'll know when you feel it, my friend. And uh, and it's going to be one of the greatest feelings you've ever gotten. And uh, We'll be rooting and praying for you in the meantime. If you're uh, If you are a man... You'll get a ring quick, because I did. (laughs) I promise you that. All right, that's all the time we have. So we'll see you next week. I'm at James Fenimore underscore. I'm at Trisha Fenimore. You can find the show at Holy Matrimony underscore underscore. And we'll see you next week.